Hello guys, my name is Carl and I'm from the All Balls channel and today we have another All Balls special. We have a really special guest with us. I have to say he's not only played in some of the top leagues of India, but he's also played in some of the best players to his disposal. And the best part is he's one of our own. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you the Baron of Borivli, Keegan Pereira. Welcome to the show. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for those kind awesome. words. <laughs> <laughs> well, Keegan, uh, it's an honor to have you on our show. And I'm sure, I'm personally really glad that you've taken time to have a chat with us. I'm just going to cut straight to it. And I want to ask Keegan Pereira, Keegan, what, what made you fall in love? What, what made you take up football? What is your earliest memory of it? Since you mentioned Burubli, Barla Burubli, so <laughs> yeah. that 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 is what happened. I'm I moved to this colony called IT colony in Burubli, mm-hmm. and that's where you know. So before back then, before football, I was I used to go to play cricket. I was like I used to live in Mira Road, and there's only cricket around there. And basically, I just you know love had the love for the game, and I used to go to Archikal even to train, like you know mm-hmm. Sachin's coach. So then in the other levels, and then uh, we moved to Borubli, and then I went around to call me 13 for guys to play cricket, and unfortunately there are none. So there's one, <laughs> so there's one ground called St. Francis BSSC ground, and I used to go mm-hmm. every evening over there, and I used to stand and look at these boys play football every single day, me and my brother of course, and then I was like, okay guys, I should try this out. I told my brother, and I told some of my friends from the colony, like, I want to try football. And I used to go, and I used to get... The first few days was horrible. I used to get thrown out on the field because they were like, you don't know this ball, you don't know the ball enough. And they were like, get out, get out. And then I used to, then I found one corner where all these small kids used to play. And then I joined them. Mm-hmm. And then, and there I used to like play like, you know, this low-key ball and all that. So that started like, you know, that interest built from there. And then mm-hmm. there's, this, there's this one tournament called the Bippin Memorial Cup. I don't know if you've heard of it. But oh, that I have. Cup, yeah. So that is like, that happens only in uh, Mumbai itself. And, uh, so I went for a trial and uh, there was this uh, coach of ours, late John Alfonso. He just passed mm-hmm. away due to COVID. And uh, he, like, he called me and he told me, okay, you know, I'll train you and I'll give you extra coach classes and all that because he seen something to me that I don't think I ever seen it in me. So I should go, I should go to him. I should train with him. And then he showed me how to, you know, kick the ball. Basically, he was my first coach who gave me the advice and he pushed me forward and he's given me the platform to go to. So yeah, it started, all started from my colony. Well, I mean, I see colony. I mean, Borivli has also always produced some great footballers. And Mumbai in general has always produced some great footballers. <laughs> and it's glad that you mentioned that I, well, I talked about that because you also kind of cut your teeth into professional football with Mumbai FC. And yes. you were under the tutelage of Khalid Jamil, who uh, we've also had Jayesh Rani on the show before. And he's also a big fan of Khalid Jamil. How, how, how influential has Khalid Jamil been as... To you as a professional footballer. So when you mentioned professional footballer, yes, he's the biggest influence to me too because he gave me the actual debut in my I League. So he gave me mm-hmm. the platform for the Indian League. So that's where it started from. So when I joined Mumbai FC, I was under David Booth. And but I was like a young boy in the the big squad. And back then we had some really big names like Noel Wilson was there. There was uh, Kullu. There was uh, Poppy. There were so many Kutti Money. There were some big stars in our team back then. So getting game time was like kind of impossible back then. But then I think after a year, David Booth moved out and Khalid Jamil took over as a team. So that's when, you know, when I played with him the first year, okay, he was guiding me, showing me things and, you know, he was, he was helping me. And then the second year, he gave me my platform. My first game, I think, was in Mumbai at Kuklij, uh against Lejong FC. And there he told me, like, you know, you're going to start this game. And then from there, mm-hmm. there was no looking back. So yeah, I really thank him because he gave me that platform to play the IE. Absolutely. I mean, you... Yeah, again, Khalid Jamil is pretty much influential for most players coming from Mumbai. And moving along, though, though, like you even went on towards Bangalore FC. You, you know, you played for Salgaonkar as well. And how was that journey? You know, before you made that big step to the ISL, which you will get to. But what was it like? You know, after spending such a long time in Mumbai, and then you know, branching out, going towards new shores. You know, like Salgaonkar and Bangalore FC. What was that experience like? For me, actually, you know, when I started with Mumbai FC, I played like two seasons uh, back to back. And then the third season, I moved to Salgaonkar. Like, uh, mm. So then when I went to Salgaonkar, I unfortunately I had a bad run over there because I didn't play any I-League matches for them. I should only play the Goa League matches for them. And then uh, when Jan came, I told them I want to, you know, move. I want to take a transfer and go somewhere. So that's where DSK Shivaji came up. And 
that's the biggest link to me going to bangalore fc because pradeep raji was bsc coach he took me to bangalore fc from bsc shivaji because i played with him in the second division and he also seen something in me and you know like i was out left back i played left winger you know he kept moving me about in the second division and that's why he took me to bangalore fc so you know salgaon was all, obviously it was great experience going out of mumbai for the first time you know exciting going to goa to play for a goan club and everything and but unfortunately it didn't go the right way for me and uh, then later i moved to bsc and then that's where i got my you know like i played second division and then i went to the i league with bangalore fc yeah the yeah and then all right after that you were drafted into the mumbai city fc into the 2015 isl season now how was it like taking that step you know now you're finally here at the big leagues like what was that feeling like it was very exciting for me to be honest because you know when the the year isl started that was the first year we didn't get to play as when we were in bangalore fc because you know mm-hmm. we were contracted to bangalore and they didn't want to take part in the isl that year so we were sitting at home and watching the isl going on and we seen some of the big names coming down like in the first season itself like anelka del piero and you know some of the big names so we were like you know like you know we watch them on tv every single day in the epl matches in spanish league and all and suddenly you see them in india playing and you can't be a long side of them it was disappointing mm-hmm. in the first season meeting at the play but when i got a chance you know we got allowed to be, play the isl that's when i you know went to the draft and then when mumbai fc picked me it was even more exciting because anelka was there you know <laughs> and you see and you see him playing you know day in day out and then you play with him and i in training i should enjoy the way he play should do some really really good things that you know you think you can dream of doing it but you can't so if you actually do that in training absolutely i mean now you've also seen you know the, the the introduction of the isl into indian football and i always like to ask a lot of players especially like you because you played in the isl in such an extensive in, in such an extensive way have you seen the landscape of indian football change you know evolve now from what it was then to you know flash forward to 2021 do you think that there has been a drastic change or do you see that there's a gradual improvement i feel the for me personally i feel it's a gradual improvement because you know back then when we won the i league it was it was good because back then the i league was one of the biggest leagues even even now if you go to see people still play the i league there's still value to i league but isl came home you know got the big names got the you know got everybody's attraction towards india now people like like abroad like coaches abroad spanish coaches and all they look they look like oh india is there there is a country named india you know so that's got a lot of attention isl has got a lot of attention to india but i feel even individually as players you know playing the isl playing with the you know the stars the, the some really good foreigners who come into uh, the isl so i feel even the indian players have improved from that you know they have, we have picked up points from the players who have come here they have guided us well and you know it's it's a mix of everything it's just not the isl that even you know obviously if the i league was not there we would not reach the isl because we would not be playing to reach the isl level right so that i think mm-hmm. everything is important so i think it's a gradual development that we reach you know 2021 isl is one of the big leagues right now so i feel it was you know started out back then and it gave us a thing now we have the best ground you know in the country we can't be complaining about ground we can't be complaining about climate or anything we, we have everything absolutely and what do you think has been your best experience so far because you are a very well traveled footballer you know and you've been very fortunate to enjoy so many experiences with different cultures of football so what has been your best memory or experience so far with all these different teams for me i think see for me the biggest was bangalore fc you know like you no know, bangalore fc was the biggest impact for me i played four years with them i enjoyed every single moment every single year we won something also not like we you know mm-hmm. we just played and we didn't win and win so we won all four years or something then i moved on to even with mumbai fc i had a good chance you know, to come into the isl that was my starting throw for the isl and you know like i played around that that was a great experience he there was something i learned from him Then I moved on to ATK. That that year was the best year for ISL because we won the ISL last year with ATK. Mm-hmm. So then there also I met you know with uh, there was Postiga was there. There was you I played along with. So there also it was fun because a lot of experience. A lot of see, every club every like Calcutta obviously the biggest fan base you get you know when they East Bengal Mohan Bagan. So even ATK had one of the best fan base over there. So when you are in Calcutta you feel like a you know you feel like a superstar. You feel like a like a proper footballer. You know and then. <laughs> Then even actually when I moved to North East, it was as good as Calcutta because everybody recognizes you there. So you know you feel like oh wow, you know you feel privileged at one point in time. So it was exciting, you know. Every every state had a different thing. Like Jamshedpur for me, Jamshedpur was actually basically a lot of Mumbai boys who were there with me. There was Karan Amin, mm-hmm. there was Farooq. Then there were a lot of uh, Mumbai people who were in the board also in the like the management management. 
So yeah. I had a lot of Mumbai people around me, so that made it even easier for me to, you know, be in Jamshedpur with them, and it was fun. Like family, all of us. So every every team had different experiences, and I enjoyed each and everything. Absolutely, I mean, like yeah, as you say, na everywhere you go, you always take the weather with you, you know. So yeah. I mean, if you have a little bit of Mumbai with you, why not, you know? Why not? Sure. And, yeah, and uh, you know, again, coming back also, we had a little brief discussion about you know the the changing landscape of football, you know, with the with the introduction of ISL. Now, I've spoken to Marco Stankovic, you know, who used to play for Hyderabad, and yeah. I asked him a very important question, you know, like as you know, as a person coming from the outside, you know, where do you think Indian football needs to improve? Now, he told me honestly that. Yeah, you know, Indian footballers need to get out more. They need to stop staying in their, you know, their their comfort levels comfort. back home, and need to be more boisterous to be at least playing in any sort of league outside of India. Would you agree? And do you think that there are even other things that Indian football needs to improve on? I think you know what he said was a point. You know, we should move out of comfort zone because we need to keep now. Like people when the foreigners came in, we learned so much from them when they were here. So if we go out and we play with twenty other, you know, foreign players, we will be as good as them. Like I mm. heard, you know, like you know, Brendan went out and he did his thing around the, you know, you know, England, yeah. you know, South South Africa. So there are a lot of players who went out. So Sunil Chetri went out, and technically they became so good. Like you know, obviously they were good. They became even mm-hmm. better. So I'm saying that all of us, you know, you know, do something. Like you know, we try try to go out more. You know, as youngsters, obviously now it's little too late for me to go out though. <laughs> but the young people, but the young people should should try it out. Should go out. Should you know take a take a chance. Like even a good fit thing. He went out. He did so well. He played the uh, Europa for one point of time. Yeah. So you know if you don't believe in yourself and you don't try it, you will not know where you stand. So yeah. And coming back to India, I think we are moving you know step by step in the right direction. Obviously, you know people say, "Are India should reach the world cup?" It's time. It's time for everything. So we we need yeah. to be the best country in Asia right now. We don't have a thing yeah. in the world. Our main focus should be Asia right now. So, and we are doing it now. We have given the, you know, all the Asian teams. People are looking back and saying, "Oh, India is good. They are doing well. They are defending. They are attacking. They are scoring goals." It was not like you know we should go there before and four, five, and all that. Now people, it's, it's maybe just one zero against Qatar. It's mm-hmm. just one zero. So they know now India is there. We are doing well. So it's a it's a progress. We did well. We now again we are doing. You know, it takes time to do everything. But people rush into it and think World Cup, World Cup, World Cup. Every time, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the next ten years, fifteen years, you never know. But I you never best, know. I mean, yeah. No, no, go on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I cut you off there. No, no, no problem. I said the best thing to do is like, you no, know, first thing, Asia. We should be the best. Maybe the top four, top five. Then we can think of going one step ahead. And right now, we are on that road. We're not far, far off from there. So I think we should concentrate on this, focus on this. And we should just continue what we're doing. Baby steps, but we leave somewhere. Absolutely, that's a really good point, there, Keegan. Uh, yeah, I mean, I also completely agree with you because uh, it it is something that I would say that India needs to just pinpoint. You know, make sure that okay, fine, we do want to play in a World Cup. We do want to, you know, play at the biggest stage as a nation. But of course, make it that smaller win, that smaller goal. You know, so you no, know, let's start with Asia. You know, let's start with the Asian Cup and stuff like that. And that's really interesting because a lot of players. Would always also dream of you know like representing their nation and stuff, but of course there are so many other nations in the world where they still struggle. You know, this there is talent and abundance of talent, but for some weird reason, maybe for the lack of grassroots football or you know just infrastructure in general. Uh, with that being said, though, like I mean, have you seen like grassroots football and infrastructure of Indian football getting better as well? Yes, totally. Because I I see so many academies right now, like you know. That like with back then we only had two or three academies. Tata was there, then there was uh, Mahindra where I should go to play the under 19 tournament. Mm-hmm. There was just very few handful you could just pick out. But now if you go to see the like Bengaluru, has have Bengaluru has have one of the best setups of academies. Then you have you know Barcelona have their own academy in Mumbai. I don't know if it's in the state. Then there are so many other academies come up now. Every every even ISL teams have their own. Like you know, grassroots from you know from under eight to under ten, under twelve. Back then uh-huh. we didn't have this. So, but now everybody is focusing on that. So, but everybody says, "Oh, it's not good. It's not good." I feel it. It is getting better. It just needs time. So, I feel it's right now we're we're on the right path to you know to progress to do something in uh, in our country. So, but we just need time. That's it. Definitely, definitely. Fingers crossed. 
Keegan, now we come to the segment of our little chat in wherever go, which I like to call basically it's called explainogram. Patent pending. We're not sure whether it's the right kind of term to use it, but it's just a little thing where we go through your socials, talk about a few pictures. You can give us describe us your best memories. So I'm going to show you a few slides or pictures, and you can just describe, tell us what it was and how you felt. Yeah. So we'll just start off with our first picture over here. If you can just watch the screen. There you go. Now, of course, that's you representing India. I'm sure this is anyone's dream, whether you're a football player or any sportsman for that matter. How great is it, or how honourable is it for you to represent your nation at the international stage? It's the best day of my life because you know you you play your entire career depending on you you want to reach the national. That's the dream. That's the aim. That's the target. And that mm. that this trip was the day I reached there. And I wanted to smile in that trip because I was very excited. But I've just been very serious and big. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, I got a game now. I'll be like, like you know, from the serious space and all that. But yeah, this is one of the best days of my life. You know, we played against Laos and we beat them six or seven one, if I'm not mistaken. So ah, well, <laughs> so, yeah. So I feel this is one of the best memories I could have playing football. Absolutely. And the next, if you were discussing, you know, about influence and about you know influential coaches in your life, and of course the next picture. This is also another influential person in your life. Big influence so, because big he, influence. So he's he's a coach. He's a very good mentor, and he's a very good friend of mine. Because uh, mm-hmm. I I don't know if you all all know this, but I played in Mahindra from 2005. So I was mm-hmm. in the junior team, and then I was called to the senior team for Mahindra United. And uh, Steven was there. He was he was like superstar back then. He was in the national team also. And uh-huh. uh, I used to go day in day out to you know for training, and he used to always be there guiding me. So always you know. This is what he's doing right now. This is what Jamshed was. He's still guiding me back then. This is like mm-hmm. maybe what two years back. But in 2005, when I was there, I was the youngest, and he was still guiding me then. Then also, and he was the first guy when I played the Bombay League match, and he crossed and I scored a goal. It was my first goal with his assist. So yeah, I think he was. Ah. A, he's an important uh, role in my life too, Stephen. Another important member in the Keegan Pereira development team. And moving on to our next to our next slide. And yeah, of course, it's better over there with you. This What is the, this over here? Yeah, <laughs> this is the first game we played against Goa in Northeast. Okay, this is my first game for Northeast, and uh, this is where uh, we scored the first goal because uh, they like Goa team fouled uh, Frederico, and he got up and he just took a shot and he scored. Like the the <laughs> keeper was out of the D and everything, and and he scored, and we were all like you know looking at each other: is it a goal? Is it not a goal? Is it a goal? Because you know he just stopped the ball and took a shot, and it was a goal. And the referee pointed out to the center, and we started laughing. We were excited because, you know, <laughs> Northeast was like back then. Northeast was not like up to the mark of reaching the top four. That year we reached top four also, and that was the mm-hmm. first team against Goa, one of the dangerous teams. And that time they had the best side. They had the best coach. They had all the players like you, you go. They had uh, Jao, Koro. <laughs> you know, they had all. The, and we scored against them, and we didn't know how to go. So we were just enjoying ourselves. <laughs> Being major giant killers there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and on our next slide, though, I just want to show you this picture now. Of course, it's with uh-huh. the evergreen Sunil Chetri. He is a big mentor to me. He <laughs> he he is also one of the biggest role mem- like role models for me in my life. This is the I League trophy we won in the third year, and this was in Calcutta Hotel. And uh, yeah, it was it was just a good memory because we actually won the league. The previous match against Telugu girl, and we mm-hmm. went to Mohan Bagan, and we were, you know, we just had to play the last game for the heck of it, and then pick up the trophy. So yeah, yeah. and even coming back to Sunil Chetri, when I joined BFC, it was, you know, we actually when I joined the new team, like you know, mm-hmm. when you join the new team, you don't know what you're going to expect. So even yeah. I didn't know what to expect. So we went over there, and even I didn't know when I was joining Bangalore FC that there's going to be a Sunil Chetri, there's going to be a Robin Singh team. And they were like mm-hmm. the national team players back then, and we thought, okay, new team, new challenge, okay. But I only knew like me and Darren Kaldera were there, so I know my and Darren and me have been growing up from the under nineteen together. We've been playing mm-hmm. in the last four five teams together, and I said, well, I have Darren Kaldera, one Mumbai guy, <laughs> someone to rely to be here. And I was like, <laughs> so then we were, we, yeah. So and then suddenly, like you know, my agent calls and says, you know, Sunil Chetri joined. I was like, Sunil Chetri joined, and I'm like, okay, that's big, big, that's really big. And then when we joined the team. It was, you know, we go into the dressing room. We said we call him Chetri by like a good name. Like, you now we give him all the respect and everything. Then one day he called, he called me and he told me like, you know, 
he enjoys the respect he loves it but he's like you know on the field by any call me chetri bhai somebody will come and smack the ball off your feet or he yeah. will pass the ball to me he's like just say chetri on the field you don't have to you know always say bhai but off, off the field okay the respect come back but on the field you have to be as so he he you know he used to guide me off everything because he used to play in front of me when i was in bsc i was a left back mm-hmm. he was a left winger so he used to tell me you know talk you know he tell me you should talk start talking i should be a very quiet person i didn't you should not talk a lot and obviously you had uh, curtis osano on your right and you had uh, sunil chetri you be like you know you like, keep your head down and you didn't know what to do how to do and then he should say you should encourage you to talk he should keep encouraging me tell me to keep talking the more i talk the more it comes easier for him to play the game and then that's, that's how we you know we built a bond together and then off field we used to go for the, you know sugar coffees and all that outside it was really fun we had a good time in bhp together well very few are very fortunate to get a chance to actually play alongside their footballing heroes and i'm sure you're very lucky that way as well and that also takes me to our next picture though because i'm sure this picture brings back a lot of memories because i think this would be your dream 11 over here <laughs> yes definitely playing i i wish i could all all of us play together in one team one year one year together but never happened <laughs> but i played with most of them together like rahul bk then uh, there was uh, jayesh all of us played in you know rahul bk played with me in mumbai he was a junior boy yeah. but he played uh, jayesh and uh, ashu played with me in adk karan sani and uh-huh. bsc with me and karan amin and jamshedpur with me so uh, and robin singh bsc uh, bengaluru and you know singh <laughs> so and this was this is uh, this when chetri used to come down to do the world cup he uh-huh. used to always play this five side for teams and we should have a lot mm-hmm. of fun playing together Oh, uh, was do you used to get really heated though? I mean, like, do you think like was no. best best brown? No, proper as, heated, as... proper yeah. heated. We should kill each other. So, so Chetri, me, Karan, Darren, and uh, Robin came once to play with us, and Robin was there. So we played one team always: me, Chetri, Darren, Karan, Sani, and Karan, uh-huh. I mean, Ashu, Jayesh, Rahul, BK. They play in our opposite team, and mm-hmm. it is we should not. We should always want to win, and they should always want to win. So you know how it goes, then. I wouldn't want to hear the galleys that fly out from that side when that game is going on. But but uh, that I, ends us. No, no, sorry, sorry, go on. I swear, when you know when you should play this, like you know, we should play at kick in Andheri, Hawaii. Yeah. And when we should play the game, and people should know we are playing this game. There was crowd coming to watch us because it was it was aggression. There was everything, everything involved, and there was fun at the end of it also. But they are people should come. and all in all uh, yeah you included all of that but also great quality football as well you know you're getting entertained as well as some good football from the lads yeah i swear you should enjoy this because i personally you should you know i think i should improve my game when i play these days because when you play a small game with one of the best players in india you you have to think fast you you know you have to you have to get the right touch instantly you can you know you can't be lazy you can't be thinking so you know you develop this thinking memory when you play this small game And if you mm-hmm. have the best players around you, you have to think even faster than a normal thing. If you play, you know, with your friends, sometimes your friends are not a baller; they get tired, and by then they come to you. But these guys, like you know, we two are hundred percent, like hundred, like you no. Know, each minute, we are just at each other. We do not like <laughs> let anybody go easy. So you know that helps us improve also. So we should do this a lot, is because at the end of the day, you you have a good pre-pre season to go, go before your club. So we should do this a lot. And he, you know, the World Cup time is during June. End of June and July, so that's the uh-huh. time we should play all these games, and then just move on to August in your preseason. And still, you have a good decent fitness to go into the game. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, Keegan. Uh-huh. I mean, that ends our explainagram segment. We're almost towards the conclusion of this interview, and this is this is where things get a little bit more light-hearted and stuff. And we have a few. I have a few questions, and maybe a few fans, the people at All Balls, also have a few questions which we'd like to ask you. And starting with the I'm sure you played in a lot of big games, and people want to know though, what does Keegan Pereira do? You know, prior to a match, what's his daily routine before a big game? He's scared before a big game because <laughs> 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 you know, like it's it's you just think about situations before a game happens. No matter what you try to do, not thinking about it, you end up doing that. Anyway. So you think you're in this situation, what's going to happen? Obviously, I always think as a defender, also I always think I want to score a goal. But then mm-hmm. I think back then I was like, no, you're just pushing it too too far. Just think simple. Think how to defend the ball first. Defend your player. Mm-hmm. You know, you a defender thinks of a clean sheet is is as equal as scoring a goal. So for me, then I should think, okay, fine. I'll just stick to the basics, stick to the easy part, and say I'll try to defend and try to keep a clean sheet every game. So yeah, I listen to music for the game. 
I think about I try not thinking about the game, but you end up thinking about the game. So I'm just being honest. But then I try <laughs> I try my level best not to think about the game, and I get scared at times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I I guess music listening to music is everyone's go-to thing, and I've and I've also heard that apparently you're a big Eminem fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the slim shady and well yeah i'm a, i'm a big huge eminem fan i like rap music as well but would you also listen to me like what what would you do what once a really big practice session or a really big match like what would kegan parella do to just unwind and relax you know and just not think about the rest of the day because you've kind of just worked your butt off the whole day a play playstation tifa tifa <laughs> <laughs> just, just go back relax and just take the controller and just play I just love pretty much. Play. Yeah, just 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 nothing. I just cut off from the world, take the controller, <laughs> the earphones on, and that's it. Just keep playing. That's it. Only FIFA, or do you have any other particular games? Like you don't no. play any like first-person shooters or something? Nothing. I just play FIFA. FIFA. I I I had the from the time I had the PS One to the PS Four on the Five Edge, but only FIFA has been on my on my thing. Wow. Well, well, you you're one of the very few just like me who kind of seen the evolution of the PlayStation also move on and on. Yes, yeah. I'm yes. also still waiting for the PS5, but it'll come there soon. Soon, and soon. <laughs> on that topic though, like like now you're a left back, you're a very you're again you've been everywhere and you you probably played at your best at your position. From an Indian standpoint, who do you think would be the best to replace you in the left back position? I mean, you have your friends, you have even international colleagues, but who do you think would be the best If they had to play at the left back position for you, I think right now I'm I'm this year I watched the ISL and I see Akash Mishra with Akash Mishra. Uh huh. He I, and so I just watch him play and sometimes you know he reminds me of my younger times when I was like young and you know I had that you know I had that hunger and I see it in mm-hmm. them and I I keep on watching Hyderabad game. They had some beautiful football this year Hyderabad. So I should uh, watch the games a lot, and I should see him, and I should see the way he plays. It just reminds me of what I did when I was little younger than you know back then. Because mm-hmm. he's tall, he's he was lanky like me, you know. He's obviously strong. He's not not like yeah. He push off the ball, but I see him, and he you know the way he goes on top, the way he defends, the way his aggression is there, and so he just reminds me of me back then. Oh, and and what about like internationally? Like if you had to pick, I mean. From the current crop of players, who do you think is right now the best left back in the world? In the country, right? Oh, sorry, in the world right now, I would say uh, I I still love uh, Jordi Alba, mm-hmm. but then like he's also in the peak of you know any new career. I've not I've not been too keen on any new left backs that come in, but yeah, even Liverpool Robin, he's done mm-hmm. great. Job right now for Liverpool and now for his country for Scotland also he's doing really well. True, he true, true. He, he has the energy that I I want to have, which I never had. <laughs> But yeah, he he's absolutely like on fire when he runs up. Absolutely. And just before we go, Keegan, just the last question I like to ask. I mean, again, you've had an extensive ex- extensive experience in football in India. Where does Keegan Pereira see himself when he eventually hangs up his boots? I'm, I'm thinking. I see. My whole dream was, you know, to open a restaurant. I, I love cooking. I just want. I wanted to become a chef at one point in my life. I had this thing of, you know, joining the hotel management, becoming a chef, and you know, moving on. Then football came out, came to me. Like you know, this colony gave me football actually, where I am right now. So yeah. So I wanted to, wanted to open a restaurant. COVID didn't help me do that though. So. <laughs> I oh, so hopefully right now, in the future, yeah, we can probably future, see. Hopefully in the future, but I think right now I'm more keen of you know sharing my experience, my footballing, you know, thing as becoming as a coach. So you know, like you know, my brother has an academy. I want to go and help him out with his academy. Show the kids like you know whatever I learned and whatever just you know share my experience with everybody and you know, hopefully coach a team in the I League or the I S L in the future. You never know. Fingers crossed, man. Keegan, as I said, man. I mean, you couldn't have summed it up even better. I mean, because normally everybody wants to, you know, at least give back to the sport. And I'm sure, even though as much as I love food, the way you do love food as well, I'm sure there's plenty of time for that. But of course, giving back to the sport is a lot more important. Keegan, all I can say is right now, what is cricket's loss is football's gain. It has been a pleasure chatting with you Thank today. You. Thank you. Honestly, yeah, I really do appreciate taking all your time and. I hope I hope we get to meet in 
in future in person so we can have a longer discussion sure, sure, we should for sure you know and for those watching once again that was keegan perera the keegan perera we like to just let you know that those watching please do like share and subscribe this has been a wonderful interview i'm carl from all balls and i'll see you when i see you see you man take care bye bye cheers